dark reunion. Christ, it's past midnight. I stop to catch my breath. Orange mist hangs in halos round the street lights. At my feet, a greasy bag. The remains of a fish and chip supper wafts its dull tang of congealed fat into the sultry air. I have a choice of routes, King's Road or London Road. I want to lie down and sleep. My evening's intake of whiskey would warm me through the night. How many was it? I lost count. Who cares? I can't stay here. I don't want to be banged up in a cell. Both roads are deserted. London Road involves a steady climb and a longer way home. King's Road is on the straight and quicker. Through Warrior Square Station, over the bridge between the platforms, and I'm there. Through the station. Over the bridge. The station. Why did I get drunk tonight? Idiot! What? Scared of the dark? At 65? Christ, grow up! I walk down King's Road. In a straight line, I think. As I approach Warrior Square, I look away. I'm scared. My boot rams into the first step of the concrete stairs, and I grasp the handrail to stop myself from falling. I reach the bridge. A drooping sign, daubed in pink graffiti, announces essential engineering works on the tracks. Drops of rain spatter at my feet. I'm almost home. My legs ache and my head spins. Keep going. Don't look up. I reach the top of the stairs, but my body gives out, and my legs buckle from underneath me. My face falls against cold metal. Below me, the dull brown tracks gleam in fitful intervals from the white station lights. Their perfect symmetry draws me along their length. They narrow the further I look before vanishing into the darkness of the Bow Peak Tunnel. The rain pings on the metal roof. A plastic bag trapped under a rail shushes as it blows in the rising breeze. A light flickers, casting the shadow of the bell-shaped tannoy onto the platform. In my exhaustion, the shadow appears to move, swaying from side to side, like a girl in a short dress waiting for a train. Like a girl in a short dress, patiently waiting for... She is there, on a bench, under the cover, sitting upright and looking straight ahead. Shirley Hughes, who loved me once. Rain slides down the perspex behind her, but I see it clearly, as if she was invisible. Only her eyes suggest a tenuous spark of life as they glitter in the reflected light from the station lamps. I feel sick. Why the hell did I come this way? Grasping hold of the handrail, I try to pull myself up, but my legs won't work. I'm sweating. She hasn't seen me yet. Move! But the seat where she was sitting is empty. My heart hammers. I look into the dark heart of the tunnel. The ivy smothering the brickwork rustles in the wind, smeared wet with rain. I turn over, crouching on all fours. I'll crawl home. Just moving gives me hope. One hand, one knee, one hand, one knee. I'm halfway across the bridge. But I see her, standing at the other end. A lighter shadow against the darker ones, watching me. I cry out and curl up into a ball. I lie there for a long time. Rain pours hard and sharp as nails. It was raining the last time we spent together. You loved me. I lusted for you. You were always at the station, winking, moistening your lips with the tip of your tongue, which only I saw. And, when opportunity favoured, grabbing moments for fumbled groping, 
in the ticket office behind the storeroom and, late at night, after the last train had passed, in the dark of the Bow Peep Tunnel. You loved. I lusted. You were fifteen. I was thirty. Then, that night, this night, thirty-five years ago, you forced my hand. Marry me, you said. I dreaded hearing those words. Marry me, you said, or I'll tell the world you're a pervert. Why couldn't we just carry on as we were? I would have looked after you in my fashion. I needed you in ways my wife could never know. Marry me or I'll tell the police. You wouldn't listen to reason. Why wouldn't you understand the twisted logic of your demands? All right, I lied. I will marry you. You sparkled with excitement. I led you to the Bow Peep Tunnel. We made love. Sex consumed our bodies. And afterwards, as you relaxed, I smashed your head against the rail. I didn't want to. Believe me when I say that. I didn't want to, but you made me. I couldn't let you live. Better you die and let me live a lie. They found your body the next day. The coroner recorded a verdict of accidental death. It gave me my freedom. I made a promise then that I would never forget you. I didn't know that you would never forget me. And now you're here, tonight. I knew you would be. Why don't you say something? Shout, scream, anything. You've waited 35 years for this moment. The rain falls harder, gurgling in the plastic pipe running down the wall, splashing in the drain as it overflows onto the platform. I open my eyes. The bench is still empty. Its stainless steel legs divide the water running under it like the breakwaters divide the sea on an incoming tide. At the end of the bridge, there are only shadows. Have you gone? Did you see the terror of my recognition and are satisfied now? I pull myself up. My legs are shaking. Stumbling, I cross the bridge. The steps on this side are replaced by a sloping walkway. Grasping the handrail, I glance sideways through the tumbling rain. I can see my house. My heart jumps, jolting my body with its deepening thump. I've made it, and joy replaces crippling fear. I emerge onto the platform. The rain soaks my head and runs into my eyes, blurring my sight. I wipe my face, and as I blink away the water, I see you standing under the arch of the Bow Peep Tunnel. No, I whimper. Your liquid eyes hold mine with a steady gaze. I'm waiting for you. I want you. The words form in my head. It might be your voice. It might be mine. My trembling body longs to run away. My feet shuffle forwards, not towards home, but towards you. As I draw closer, you smile. I see you now as I remember you. Slim and supple, long brown hair cascading over delicate shoulders. Your oval face. Your full, soft lips, enticing, inviting, promising enchantments that can only be imagined. Why did you make me kill you? I reach the platform's edge and half jump, half fall onto the shifting gravel that supports the heavy rails. You wait, unruffled by wind or rain, framed by the immensity of the tunnel's blackness. And that blackness sucks you in, draws you deeper into its cavernous mouth, and I trip after you, trying to keep up. Your smile beckons, and stretching out my hands like a blind man, I follow you into the dark. Abruptly, the rain ceases. The air feels damp and warm. 
my boots crunch on the gravel, sounding first near and then far, as the echoes bounce backwards and forwards in the blanketing dark. I reach forward to touch you, but you stay tantalisingly beyond my grasp. How deep and dark the tunnel is. How I long to reach you. Where are you taking me, my love? Then you are gone. I am alone in the middle of the tunnel, lost in the dark. I turn one way and then the other. The dull grey of the tunnel's mouth looks a hundred miles away. Where are you? I call your name, and the echo repeats my despair over and over and over again. Shirley! 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 It reverberates off the brick walls and off the rails, and just when I think that it will echo away into nothingness, it renews its energy as the rails begin to vibrate. They buzz and crackle with building power. My plaintive tone deepens as a new force drives it on, an insistent note that makes my ears ache. My body shakes, repeating the harmony threatening to overwhelm me. Surely! My desperate call falls flat, relegated to a pathetic whimper that has no substance. A white light gleams on the damp stones, throwing moving shadows in hasty flight across the tunnel walls. Too late! I see the clattering train bearing down on me. I freeze. Scared to step across the track, scared of the train slicing wheels hurtling towards me. And then you are there, before me, calm and reassuring, your outstretched arms wide and welcoming. I lift my trembling arm, but just as our fingers touch, you snatch your hand away. Your eyes narrow, gimlet sharp, and your smile holds triumph. Thank you.